Hello and welcome to this North London Derby preview. I'm Harry Simu from the Chronicles of Aguna and I'm delighted to be joined uh, by two of the head honchos from the uh, Oh What A Night Spurs podcast, part of the 90 Min Network. Welcome, uh, Ben and Hunter. How are you guys doing? Oh, that on gas to be called a head honcho. Yeah, I, I, love that. I have Honestly. never been a head honcho anywhere or in <laughs> any sort of sphere. That's dreamy. Yeah, now we're the head honchos, Ben. When we go back into the podcast, that's how we have to intro ourselves from now on. So sure. we're, recording, we're recording the pod today. Like yeah. I'm going to absolutely lord that over. <laughs> <laughs> Put Dan Kilpatrick in his place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. But great to be on, man. Yeah, and, uh, uh, you should lord it up. You should. You should indeed. <laughs> um, big game, obviously, coming up on Sunday and, and myself and Hunter were talking a little bit before we started recording about how there's a bit of a strange feeling around this one, certainly from an Arsenal perspective. You know, we come into this game obviously wanting to take all three points. We lost the North London derby earlier in the season, which gives us a little bit more um, sort of, you know, of a need to go on and, and get an impressive result. And Mikel Arteta has been under pressure from some sections of the fan base. And obviously a derby win always goes quite a long way in in silencing that for a little bit. I mean, from an Arsenal perspective, we go into the game and and as much as I want to win it, I still feel like my focus is on the Europa League and I haven't really been able to enjoy the build-up to this one because the Europa League uh, game was on Thursday and that very much took the focus. But after a positive result for Arsenal, you can now look ahead to this game on Sunday and you can start getting excited about it. Harry, can I ask you, you know, you said a, a, a win in the North London derby goes a long way or like it, it sort of goes some way to kind of like help him with the perception and the mood and, and the general kind of narrative around the club. How long does that last in, in 2021? Because you remember back in the day, a North yeah. London derby win was basically like that was gold. It, it brought you a month. Yeah, like yeah, you, yeah. You, you dined out on that. You know? I, don't, I think people chuck it out so quickly now, don't they? So it how, feels like that. With Arsenal, I wonder, is it like, what, like two, three games? Is it, what do you reckon it is? It's, I think what it does is it just, it just silences people for, for a few weeks. It's not going to be, you know, anything major. The reality is when you look at this North London derby and why as Arsenal fans, we're probably finding this a little bit weird in the build up is that we go and beat Spurs on Sunday and yes, it's great. And yes, we improve our league position slightly, but does it actually mean Arsenal will be contenders for a Champions League qualification spot. It doesn't. Um, but the Europa League can potentially be that for us. So from our perspective, the North London derby is about pride this season. You know, I don't see it as having an, an impact on where Arsenal finish in the table come the end of the season. So Mikel Arteta will dine out on it for a little bit. Obviously, it pleases the fans. But ultimately, if Arsenal go on Thursday night and get dumped out of the Europa League in the second leg, which in theory shouldn't happen now, but if that was to happen... <laughs> Then all of a sudden that derby win's gone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I mean, how are you guys feeling uh, sort of in, in the build-up to this one? Is it very much the same? Is it the Europa League feels a little bit more important? Or, or do you guys feel in a better space? You, you've been in better form of late than we have, of course. It, well, this, yeah, this is the best form we've been in for months. Um, we seem to have sort of changed tack a little bit in terms of we're being much more on the front foot we're starting on the front foot we're pressing teams we're starting to see what what we can do with a slightly more attacking mindset we're not dropping off anymore it, we're using the substitutions a little bit better it's 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 everything i think Mourinho has been accused of not being able to do which is which is good it's good to see look is it, you know but it is just five games that's the other thing we're not going to get carried away but what but i think i think what you said is kind of although we're we're knocking on the door for the top 4 again now I think with Mourinho, you're looking for trophies. And so uh, the Europa League, incredibly important. And then the, you look at the Carabao Cup is also incredibly important for us. So I think you're right. It is a little bit different than than previous previous derbies in that I think both of us have sort of got our eye on the Europa League that comes, what, six, five days after playing in this. So, But, you know, at the same time, we're on the charge for top four now, or that's how it feels. And so we need to win. So it's, you know, it's, it's a must win, you know, for, if we're just doing it in what it is, it's seventh versus 10th. <laughs> if we win, we're, we're on, we're joint on points with fifth. And if you win, you're, you're only four points behind us, three points behind us. So, you know, there is, there is, you know, there's plenty at stake still. The, the, I suppose for us, 
if we West Ham play United this weekend, so to to go ahead of West Ham is obviously important because we need to sort of just in my mind, and I know West Ham fans think this is a crock of BS, but West Ham are massively punching above their weight. Like they're a really good side, and they are like they have some phenomenal players, but they're not a side that is a top four side. Then mm. that's not a side that is should be breaking into the top four. It's the underperformance of so many of the big teams that has allowed and facilitated that to happen. So the fact that Spurs are putting in runs together, I think it's important to get back ahead of West Ham. And then I think you can sort of put the the kind of like you can put yourself in the position, right? You can get yourself in a position where you could get top four. But I think I'm just sort of hit the nail on the head. What's really annoying is that you'd almost rather someone tell you, look, top four's off. You can't yeah. get top four. There's no <laughs> way it could happen. Like you know, the gap's too big. You can't make it up. And then have a nice run in at the end of the season, get build some momentum, you know. But then when it comes to Europa League nights, be able to go into the games at the weekend and be like, right, we're going to play a slightly weakened side in the Premier League. And if we draw a game, it's not the end of the world. Unfortunately, like because of the nature of where we're at at the moment and because we did have that bad run, if Jose Mourinho loses the League Cup final and mm. we don't then have a good, like we get knocked out in the Europa in the semi-finals and then we come seventh, that's, I'm not going to say it's a disaster, but that for Spurs is it's just a rubbish season. It, it, it becomes, it becomes, yeah, it, it has the potential, doesn't it, to turn from a potentially very positive season into a negative one. And for Arsenal, I guess it's the reverse. You know, we're, we're in a situation where we're out of the Carabao Cup, we're out of the FA Cup. Um, you know, we gave up our FA Cup without a fight, really. Uh, we're in a terrible Premier League position and the Europa League is the only chance we have of turning what has been a quite frankly a disastrous season into a positive one. So it's 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 fine margins for both clubs at the moment and it just feels to me like going into this derby and I don't want to play it down because when the day comes I'll be buzzing for it and I'll be excited and you know passionate about it as always but it does feel as though this derby just carries a little less weight than previous yeah, derbies. Definitely. Definitely. And yeah, that's I really the league position plays a massive part in that, right? If we were if we were third and fourth, as as has been the case a lot in the last couple of years, well, fourth, fifth usually, you know. But it, it, you know, it feels like you're in it. It feels like you know, it's the weight of it. The weight of the game feels a lot more. Like you said, Harry, when it comes, I'm already starting to get nervous just talking about it. If you're from North London and you have a hundred mates who support Arsenal and about four who support Spurs. You know why the, this game is still weighty, and you've and you've and as Spurs fans, especially, uh, my whole childhood was just being battered by Arsenal. So the fact that this game is now is now more in our favour. I mean, we've had very positive results in the last few years. is is still lovely, and I still get nervous about losing it because I know the amount of texts and phone calls and uh, that I'll end up with if we lose. <laughs> yeah, completely agree. It's um. It's one that is always a horrible one to lose, isn't it? You don't want to, the next few days, you kind of want to crawl under a rock and, and disappear. Uh, but in our jobs, it's impossible to do that. And that's the problem. <laughs> that is the that is the major problem. In terms of um, how Spurs are likely to line up, uh, you know, was there any indication based on last night's game as to how maybe Mourinho might line up for this one? I didn't see the Spurs game, admittedly. Um what I will have a quick moan about that I haven't had a moan about yet is the fact that you guys got your game switched to play at home. Um, and, you know, it's I, I know the circumstances right now around football are, are an absolute mess and we're having to just do whatever we got to do to get by. But this whole thing of of the both sides not being able to play on at home on the same night and, and why that decision... Behind closed doors. Yeah, behind closed, I, 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 I closed mad, doors. Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, it's, it, it's frustrating, you know, because Arsenal... Have had to, Arsenal had to travel double the distance to Athens to play Benfica, so the distance from 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 London to <laughs> to Lisbon was yeah. doubled to go and play our home game, right? Yeah. Um, in the in the second leg of that, and now okay, we've been drawn against Olympiacos, but we've got another major journey, and we've got to come back and recover from that. While Spurs have just 
cruised at home mm. against uh, Dynamo Zagreb. So I don't mean to sound like a salty Arsenal fan, but I do think that yeah, I would be raging. As a, like if it was if it had happened to Spurs, I'd be livid. But I didn't, so I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you nailed it, Hazy. I, I just remember thinking, God, I'm glad that's not us. Who's doing that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but look, you're right, Harry. It's absolutely mad that they've that they've had to keep this pl- this, uh, this sort of antiquated rule in place while well, it's all behind closed doors. It makes no difference. But UEFA, you know, just sitting on their high horse again. No, one of you yeah. does have to go. Can't have two traveling teams into London Madness. on the same night. It'll be too busy. Oh, yeah. yeah, two <laughs> two flights team, coming in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In terms of the team, one thing that Spurs fans, I think, are probably really excited about is that it basically picks itself now. Yeah, which is really nice. Mm. No, he's, he's he's spot on. There's a there's a couple of rested players last night that sort of more defensive players. I'll be honest, which is sort of what we're relying on at the moment. Is Toby Alderweireld? If he's got fresh legs, we look defensively sound. And Sergio Regulon, if he's playing, oh, I mean, if he's playing, we've got an attacking threat down the left, down the left, and and then Hoybier managed to get a uh, seventy minute rest last night. He didn't play, so all in all. We rested three who I consider first team players. We got Harry Kane another couple of goals. He's in the best form of of this season. He's he's playing the best football I've seen him play in a long time, and and then there was like good performances again from your Lucas Moura's and things. It just it's all been revitalised a little bit. They all look fresh. They all look interested. There's a hunger. There's a press. I mean. Sorry, Harry, I'm probably scaring you here, but <laughs> I mean, it does. It it's looking good at the moment. It really is. But that that is the eleven you'll get, but basically, yeah. which is really nice. You'll get the recent goal, uh, Aurier and Regulon, um, Alderweireld and Sanchez, Hoybier and Endon Bele as a midfield two, and then the only the only possible tweak might be that he doesn't play Lucas because Lucas has been playing really well in this number ten role with. Bale, Son and Kane. So the, the number 10 position is the only one that's up for grabs. And I reckon he might be half tempted to play Deli Ali because he knows that he loves it against Arsenal. Yeah. Yeah, it's always good to have a settled side. And, and I think that's been difficult for a lot of teams to achieve this season because of the nature of the campaign games crammed in together. From an Arsenal perspective, in terms of the team, it's actually quite difficult to predict what Mikel Arteta is going to do. And I know you guys were talking about how good it is to have a settled eleven. But I think in Arsenal's case, what's been good over the last few months, and I know the results haven't always haven't always you know been there, but in terms of our performances since Christmas, there's been a massive upturn, and part of that has been because there's been competition in the squad. You look at the central defenders, and last night it was uh, David Luiz and Gabriel pl- who played, but Pablo Marie has come in and been brilliant. Um, as well. So, you know, Rob Holding has also had a fairly decent season. So you look at those two and you think, well, either of them, either of those two could come in to replace someone and freshen it up and it wouldn't be that much of a drop off. You look at the right back position, Cedric or Bellerin, you know, both have, have been quite good of late. Move into the midfield. That's the one area where I don't think we have room to play around with um, in the centre of midfield. I think it very much is Xhaka and Partey as the the main two. But ahead of that, again, you know, Saka's a mainstay, I'd say, or Bamiyang's a mainstay, but you've got Odegaard, you've got Smith Rowe, you've got Pepe. Willian has even uh, turned it on lately. I don't know what's happened there, but he's he's providing assists left, right and centre. So Mikel Arteta has that now. And um, I think that's a testament to him. And I think when people give him stick about sort of the, the chopping and changing, I think one of the good things he has done is he's breeded that competition in the squad. He's given players opportunities and they're fighting for certain positions now. And I think that's elevated the overall level of performance. Harry, is, pa- is Partey kind of up to full fitness? There's a. have got to be honest, I've got a lot of concern around Thomas Partey right now. Obviously, when we signed him, I was I was delighted. You know, top quality midfield player, felt like the kind of player that Arsenal had been missing. He looked missing. great at the beginning, didn't he? Yeah, great. yeah, he looked great at the beginning. And... Um, just there's just been a few performances of late that have made me sort of ask questions. And I thought that at Burnley, um, he was very dominant for the first half an hour. But then I thought after that, he really dropped off. And I think when he drops off, naturally, because he's such an important player, that has a knock-on effect on 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 Granit Xhaka uh, alongside him. I thought that uh, that in Greece last night, he wasn't very good. I thought that was probably one of the worst performances he's put in in an Arsenal shirt. And the fact that Mikel Arteta hooked him off after 56, 57 minutes without um, 
any injury concern, any worry. And it, he said it was just purely tactical. I think tells you a lot about what he saw from him. And he's just missing that energy at the moment. He's missing that sharpness, that fitness. That is what makes him such a dominant footballer. And um, it is a worry. It is. It's time though, isn't it? You really, I mean, if there's one thing we've learned through players like Tango and Dombele, who was, had one of his best games, I thought, last night, Ben. What did you reckon? Brilliant. Uh, Tango, yeah, I, yeah. I think um, he got to that point, you know, where he just is taking the piss. Yeah, he's he's, like, he's become a foul magnet, hasn't he? Yeah, which for any you know when you got that player in your side who just draws foul after foul after foul after foul, and even though they're sitting on the floor complaining about getting fouled, you know they are bloody loving every yeah. second of it. Yeah. It's a, that's a bit of a his, dream. His hobble, watch. his hobble after getting fouled. <laughs> you see where he always pretends to be injured. He's not really injured. Um, but but I just what I'm saying with Pate is it, it's just going to be patience, isn't it? It's a new league. It's a new team. He's had two really. It was hamstring injuries, right? Was it- yeah, well, one of them was hamstring. One of them was a groin problem. Well, what we know about hamstring injuries, they slow you right down for about six months. They can slow you right down. They're like, did- Deli Ali's spoken very well about it, actually. He just felt so slow after his first two uh, hamstring injuries. And it- it's just that thing of like trusting your legs again and getting back to it. Yeah. Um you know, I don't, I don't mind him underperforming for a couple of months than being good against someone else. But I'm sure you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you don't. Um, guys, we, we've talked about the derby. We've talked about sort of how we're feeling going into it and maybe that it's not the biggest derby of all time. But uh, come Sunday, I'm sure we'll all be uh, we'll all be right up for it. Um, let's get some some quick predictions to round it up. Um, ben, I'll come to you first, mate. How do you see this one going? What are your what are your thoughts ahead of the big game? I am not nervous about it and I wow. should be maybe that will change but I think Spurs are going to win 2-0 like, I think oh, we're in really good form I trust our defence more than I've trusted it I think that we're also at a point where um, there's enough players in the squad that are that just love you know when, back in the day you had players who just lived for this game we've mm. started to get that core group again that just completely get what it is to be in this game again. So, um, so yeah, I, I think Spurs going to win this one too. You know, you'll be hearing from me on Sunday night, Ben. Oh, mate, I, I, I'm really aware. <laughs> I realised more recently, like I used to be so tentative with these sort of things. I thought, oh, it's going to come back to bite me in the arse, and I realised that that's, that's just not the way football works. While while you're on top and while you're feeling like you're the better side, you've got to slap it like you've got to absolutely like rub it in so yeah i'm thinking two nil wins first. <laughs> no worries hunter over to you mate uh i'm gonna go two one winter spurs I, I don't see us keeping a clean sheet but um <laughs> but i do see a, a spurs victory just because of sir harry kane playing at the level he is at the moment and he absolutely lives for this game i mean Always. he has the most does he have the most goals in this game now most goals in Auckland derby, most goals in London derby. I think. So you know, I'm uh, him in the form he's in. Spurs in the form they're in. Um, yeah, I'm going two one. Cool. I'm going to go uh, with a two one Arsenal win. Um, I just think that the fact that we got such a strong result in Europe, um, yesterday not only breeds confidence, but it means that I'm not going to say we can take our foot off of it for the second leg, but it means we can almost give a little bit more on Sunday, knowing that we can kind of cruise through the second leg. we got three away goals, um, a two-goal cushion as well. So, yeah, I feel like that's going to make a massive difference and I feel like that might play on how Mikel Arteta approaches this. And I talked a lot about rotation and the strength and depth at the minute in certain areas, but there are obviously certain players that um, elevate us to another level and, and the likes of Aubameyang is one of them, Bukayo Saka at his best. So I think that we uh, we stand a good chance. Plus it's at the Emirates Stadium. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Not that, not that the uh, without a crowd it makes that much difference, but you know, still home advantage. Yeah, you <laughs> right. got to take, you got to take what you can. Last, well, I have one question for you, Harry. Where's Martinelli? Because I loved Martinelli, and he scared me genuinely. This has been a massive debate 
um, mm. over the last sort of few months amongst Arsenal fans. And I actually think that there is no issue with Gabriel Martinelli. It is purely a case of he's a young kid who suffered a really severe injury. Yeah. And it's about managing him back to fitness. The, the, the upturn in form from Willian and Pepe as well has made it more difficult for him to get in. And yeah. I posted a picture on Twitter actually last night of him celebrating the goal with Gabriel. So he's not disengaged. He's not unhappy. I think mm. it is just about uh, managing his fitness. Yeah, but, makes sense. We're going to leave it there. Um, guys, make sure uh, you check out the Oh What A Night podcast. Make sure you check out 90 Min. Head, o- head over to the website as well. There's lots of content uh, over there looking ahead to the game as well. So get involved. Uh, follow the guys on social media. I'll put their uh, handles in the description and uh, we'll be talking after the game, I'm sure. So uh, <laughs> until then, take care, guys. <laughs>